Hello everybody and welcome to part two of my celebration of Old Hammer and the progress report from my Organ Goblin army. So if you've seen part one, you'll know that I've done the Goblins so far, all mounted, um, and I was picking out some of my favourite Savage Org models from the 80s and 90s and preparing to do a big unit, which I've since done, as you can see in the pictures. There's 56 models there in total, um, and like a madman, I was painting all 56 models simultaneously. Um, don't ask me why I like to do that. I think it's... Well, with, what go with what's going on in my life at the moment, I don't actually have that much time to do hobby um, and to do painting. And so it's kind of an hour or so, if that, before I go to sleep. And therefore, I don't mind doing a very repetitive task. And it's a nice way to paint, you know, paint all my Savage Orcs at once. And then it's like a big task, which I'm working towards. And then once it's all done, I never have to paint a Savage Orc ever again. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a big core unit for the centre of my army. Taking inspiration, of course, from the old um, heavy metal uh, painting style from the 90s. There's actually, in the 4th edition uh, Orc and Goblin book, there's actually a Savage Orc painting guide where they've got lots of pictures and they actually talk about the, you know, the strong bright colours and the bright green bases um, and, and, you know, the, the, the strong reds and blues that you can add to the models to really make them stand out and, as a good contrast to the other Orcs and Goblins, which are armoured and clothed and look different to the savage orcs um and give some ideas about the tattoos about the war paint and the colors you should use and different sort of images and glyphs that you can use for the tattoos um and the you know the designs for the shields and so on um they take a long time to paint these models though because it's kind of like painting the same model twice because you you know you do all of the layering you're doing all the uh you start doing the highlighting and then you've got to go over it again and do the tattoos so you kind of and the tattoos is not just you know one color of blue like I'm using, I think it was three shades of blue. So I've got the, um, using the Citadel paints, it's the Cantor blue, Sotec green, Teclis blue. So it's like three different types of blue that, that I'm using just for that blue war paint. So you, it takes a long time because you, you know, you're doing all the greens on the skin and then you've got to go back over them with the blues or the reds or whatever to get a good um, finish with the tattoos. Um, as I said, I'm using mostly the Citadel paints, but I didn't use for the green. So I didn't use the War Boss green or the Scar Snick green from the Citadel range. Um, I did a black base and yeah, I know it's probably better to use a white undercoat and then go straight in with the goblin green all over, but I don't know, just stuck in my habits of doing just black undercoat and then just loads and loads of layers to get it brighter and brighter and brighter. So that's just the way I paint. I enjoy painting that way. Um, and you can see the darker greens coming through. If you pick up a model and look at it closely, you can see all the different layers on there. So I had about two coats on every model, about two coats of this Death World Forest. Um, then went on with the Goblin Green. I've got the old school Goblin Green there, as you can see in the picture, but I've got mainly using the, the Vallejo Goblin Green, which is the next one along. I don't want to start doing the whole army with the old school Goblin Green and then run out of it and not be able to get any more of it. So I'm using the Vallejo Goblin Green mainly. Um, then I've got the, uh, the Shade, Green Shade, and then first highlight i mixed the goblin green with a bit of yellow um which gives it that, that yellowy tinge to the green and then i've got the ogryn camo highlight as the final highlight so lots of different layers on there gradually bring it up to a, to a very bright skin color and it it really pops when you you know when you see it on the table um the pictures don't do it justice i mean I, you know i would say that sort of <laughs> taking pictures amateur pictures on my iphone and sticking it on youtube but you know you gotta you gotta see in the flesh to get the, the full sort of colors there but um, hopefully you can get a good sense of it from the pictures. Um, then I've got the shields, of course. Um, I haven't freehanded all the shields like the old heavy metal style, but I've um, you know used the, the more recent embossed shields, as you can see in the pictures. I've kept the colour schemes, though. So I've got, I like the sort of red and purple trim to the shields with the sort of black background on there. Um, the purple adds a lovely different colour to the unit as well, and I've done tried to do some of the other bits of detail in purple as well to really bring out that um, sort of contrast to the uh, you know greens and reds and blues and stuff and have another colour in there. A um, couple of the shields I've freehanded, um, done some sort of lightning designs on there. I tried to use some of the old transfers as well for some variation. I found a bunch of old transfers that I got from like an old, you know, stuck in a box since for, for 20 years from an old Gorka Morka set or something like that. I found some old transfers which were pretty cool. Um, haven't used transfers in ages. I've uh, got some of the Archer models there as well that you can see, which are lovely models, just 
lovely designs. And you know, th these models, they're, they're old school models. They don't have the detail that the new plastic models have. You're really just guessing as to where you want to put these tattoos. You know, you're freehanding a lot of it. Um, so you don't have all of the, um, you know, the, the, the crevices and nooks and crannies in the model that you can just follow with your brush and, and stick some shade over it and it all just flows into the, uh, the detailed miniature. You've really got to layer it on and guess where you're, where you want to put the, um, the tattoos and stuff. And, um, yeah, I went for the same sort of bright red bows there, uh, <laughs> to, to keep the unit nice and bright. Um, many of the orcs I put in there are some of the third ed savage orcs from the eighties, which have got some lovely poses, some really characterful models there where they're sort of screaming and hunched over. And, um, there's some, some lovely mo old models there. Um, some of the character models in the front rank, as you can see, some of these models are fantastic as well. The champion models or, or big boss models. Um, that shaman's one of my favorites. The war boss there is from avatars of war, also metal. Um, although just looking at that model now in the pictures, I think I might go back onto the bone color there with a bit of shade and highlight it up again because the bone, the, the white on the bone, the screaming skull or whatever it is, is kind of screaming at me a bit too much in the pictures. So I think I might go over that, uh, bone color for the war boss, but he was a joy to paint that model. I got Wurzag in the unit. Um, I love the rules for him in eighth edition. So I'm really looking forward to getting him on the tabletop. Um, that's a, that's a conversion that model. So I've obviously just taken an old metal shaman model and stuck the worst egg head on him. I had to sort of trim away quite a bit of the model because the head's quite big and it was hard to fit him on there. He's got this like snake around his neck. So it was hard to sort of get the head in the right position, but managed to get it looking good in the end. Um, I am missing a squiggly beast for Wurzak. So if anyone has a, a little squig I could use as a squiggly beast, let me know. I'd like to buy one. Um, and, um, yeah, so started to sort of evolve the basing of the unit with a bit of, bit more dry brushing. So if you remember from my sort of goblins, I was unsure about how to finish off the basing. I've since decided just to keep it um, in the sort of old school 90s style where I've got the goblin green and I'm sort of dry brushing on with a bit of, a bit of yellow. So I've used a bit of Avalon Sunset to sort of dry brush it on. It creates a sort of warmer feel to the base there. I'm still undecided about whether I want to add any more terrain to the bases like some grass poking up or some rocks or something there are a few rocks on the bases that i've used um already but minimally you know so I'm, i might go back once the army's finished and add some more stuff onto the bases we'll see um still got the banners to do i'll probably save them for last i really like um and i'll see if i can find a picture of this to put up on the screen actually um, there were these old banners that had like snakes on them and they were originally from the the boar boys that were the same range as these they made them for 40k and they were called snake bite boar boys I don't know if anyone remembers them um, I'll try and get a picture and put it up on the screen but they had these cool banners that were like snakes which I just love and so I want to see if I can find, try and replicate those banners for the savage orc somehow um, I've, I've done two command groups actually for this big horde of savages here so I can split them up into two different units so I'll try and find a couple of those banners um that I can sort of photocopy you know print out and paint them in that sort of snake style because I just just really love the way that they look um and yeah that's the unit hope you like the pictures there um hopefully I can get these guys on the tabletop and, and bring them to a tournament when the army's finished um next year and uh, people can see them in the flesh Lots more models to get through in the collection. I've got trolls to paint. I've got a wyvern. I've got some black orcs. So I'm sort of itching to get further on with the army. Um, and I've got a couple of other units in progress, which I'll show you in a minute. Right, let's give you another sneak peek of a unit that I'm working on. This is the boar boys. Um, 18 boar boys here in total. This is just the boars, obviously. I'm just painting them, basing them, got them all magnetized and stuff. Old Kev Adams boar boys. I think he did about 10 different sculpts. Not sure if I've got all 10 here, um, but I'll show you some of the facial expressions. They do look pretty cool, these guys. They're quite stocky. Um, I've got all different riders to go on the top of them. I'll show you them in a bit. Um, but yeah, some of these balls are really cool. Uh, let's pick out another one here. Let's have a look at this guy. You're going to focus. You're going to focus. There we go. Lovely old sculpts, these ones. 
Um, for the chariots here, I've got some of the Marauder Boars, which are a bit smaller, a bit slimmer, um, but they've got nice dynamic poses, which I think will work well with the chariots. I'll show you the chariots in a bit. Just uh, slogging out the painting of the boars here. Managed to get a few of the armoured boars, which were originally were the mount for the war boss on board from the Marauder range. Um, a couple of the armoured boars as well for what the other chariot, which should look cool. Um, yeah, so looking forward to getting those ball boys all done. Oh, actually, I can give you a sneak peek, can't I, while he's here, of my my Blackhawk BSB. Um, this is what he's going to look like. Just ugly fella here, isn't he? With his eye patch and his teeth all over the place. I've just um, based and shaded him at the moment. Still got to do the highlighting, so work in progress there. He's going to have a big banner on him. All right, so let's uh, show you some of these riders. So these are the riders for the Boar Boys. So excited to get some paint on some of these models. Um, again, it's the old Kev Adams Grunters and Snorters. I do actually have a complete set, uh, which I'm very fortunate to have uh, collected. It took me a long time to get all of them. Um, but yeah, some of these models are just classics. I mean, just so much character to them. I love the sort of crazy horned helmets and the um, sort of sunken eyes in their faces. Yeah, some of that. Is he going to focus there? Yeah, look at that. His mouth open, screaming. Um, I might even try and tilt his sword a little bit. There we go. Oh, it's a bit. Oh, it's a bit delicate. I think he's going to break off. Um, or maybe he's been pinned. Is he pinned? Oh, he's pinned. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Sorry, I forgot. This is the one that's pinned. So, yeah, so I can sort of change his sword. Maybe he's going to be like that as he rides on the uh, rides into battle. Lovely standard, very uh, classic one. This is. Um, he's got grey with this sort of elongated jaw and the um, sort of bat symbol <laughs> that, he's, that he's holding there. Not entirely sure whether I'll use them as orc bull boys or savages. Um, I mean, yeah, some of these sculpts, they yeah, are just, just classic sculpts. Look at that sort of morning star, that funky axe. Look at his armor with the spikes on it. Look at this sort of boss here. It's sort of just, just. Just a lovely skull, doesn't it? I mean, look at his face, look at, look at his expression on his mouth there with his funky helmet and how he's sort of holding his his hammer down like that. I mean, just lovely. Yeah, really can't wait to start painting some of these. Um, been a, a bit of effort and a bit of patience on eBay to try and collect all of them. Let's show you some more just because they're just so lovely. I've got some here that are, some of them are all Marauder ones as well. Let's get Show you a couple of those in a minute. Just every single one, just it's just got it's just bursting with sort of individuality. Um, might try and do some wall paint on them as well, make them like a sort of quite unique looking unit that I can use as as boar boys or savage boar boys. Oh, here we go, a couple of the Marauder miniatures ones here. These guys. You can call one with the double handed axe. Yep, yeah, so they're the boars. I've got the chariots here, I just thought I'd show you these. So I'm sure you recognize these as the old Beastman chariots. Um, but I've got sort of converted them a little bit with some the sides from one of the old orc, orc chariots. I've put that on the front there. To give it that sort of orc symbol on the front, and then the rest of it's from the Beastman chariot. So um, hopefully that will sort of integrate quite well once I slap some paint on it. Um, this one similar, although I've done it sort of on the back, so it's sort of open at the front. And I'm planning to have so this guy will be sitting on the front here. He looks pretty cool. He's got like an eye patch on him, and then I've got this guy. That's a lovely old spearman as well. Great character to that model. We'll stick him in the middle. Sort of like that. You know, so he's sort of sitting down and he's standing up. 
So that's the plan for that one. And then for the other one, uh, so I've got this guy here. He looks like he's almost holding it, like as a banner pole as well. Perhaps I could convert that and make it like a little banner pole or something. But even as a spearman, he'll be going. In, he'll go in the front like that. And I've got this guy riding on the back, bringing up the rear here. He sits very nicely on there, so he's going to look cool. Yeah, really looking forward to those chariots. Don't ask me why I'm painting all these models all at once. I just sort of get into the routine of doing a big batch paint of a whole unit all at once and. You know, I'm doing all the balls for the ball boys, and I can do the chariots, and I'll sort of do it all at the same time. And it'll take me forever, but then hopefully I'll post the finished product on here um, in the future. So watch this space. The next part of my army that I want to show you is going to be the snotlings, and the, you've seen the savage orcs, and you've seen the goblins. What orc and goblin army would be complete without some snotling pump wagons? Um, in 8th edition you can take up to 4 of them, so let's see if we can get 4 of them painted just in case I want to bring out some random craziness into the army. I've been lucky enough to get my hands on 2 of these um, old school, very old school, snotling pump wagons from back in the day. Um, 12 pound a pop they used to be it seems. Um, this one, uh, back in 1990s isn't it? Yes, that's 1999. And this one, 1997, so okay, stayed didn't go up by <laughs> the price stayed the same in those two years. You can see by these blisters actually they've both got a seller tape on them. I didn't buy them together, I bought them separate separate time, separate sellers. Um but they've both been seller taped, which either the past owner was curious and wanted to have a peep inside at the bits. Or, as I suspect, because it's quite a heavy blister pack, I think maybe um just sort of handling it, the sort of plastic comes away from the cardboard quite easily. And then, of course, the little snotlings and stuff start to fall out if it's got a hole in. So I reckon, for that reason, if you're going to sell it on eBay, you put a bit of sticky tape on the side. Um, this is the other pump wagon that I've been lucky enough to get my hands on. Now, for me, this I wouldn't actually call this old hammer. Um, I would call this, you know, like a sort of middle hammer, I suppose you could say, 6th edition era. Um, I don't know, do you have a date on there? Yeah, there we go. So 2004, yes. I wouldn't call this old hammer per se, but to be honest, I mean, in terms of the aesthetic, I mean, the snotlings look fine. I haven't I need to open it and check they're the same size as the other snotlings I've got. Um, but if they are, I see no reason why I can't just stick it in the army. Um, you know, snotling pump wagons aren't supposed to look the same. In fact, I don't want them to look the same. So obviously these two, if I assemble them as they're supposed to be, um, I'm going to have two identical pump wagons there, which I don't really want. Um, so I'm going to try my best to, uh, you know, convert them in some way. Um, I also picked up one of these, which is, um, you know, on the sprue, which is a Blood Bowl pump wagon. It's not called a pump wagon, but it's, you know, something similar from, from Blood Bowl, um, which I might use just not as a pump wagon on its own, but as some conversion to sort of change one of these pump wagons so it looks a bit different. I don't really want two identical pump wagons. Um, and I've also got some of the snotlings that came with this this Blood Bowl pump wagon um, are in some sort of really dynamic poses. Um, now they're all in bits here so I can't really show you but um, hopefully try and incorporate some of those new plastic snotlings in with it as well. Um, and then last but not least over here, check this out, Proper old school, da da da, Warhammer, siege attackers. Yeah, um, I can't remember who it was. Um, uh, someone gave me the idea of using this. I mean, this is an old metal. You can hear the bits shaking in the box there. Um, battering ram from the uh, Warhammer siege. And yeah, the sizing is great. I think it would make a nice pump wagon. Um, let's just have a look at the back here. Um, let's see what we got. Yeah, so you can see how it all puts together. How to assemble your battering ram. This box contains one battering ram, two randomly supplied log rams, and two randomly supplied ladders. Yeah, so I can use this battering ram sort of as it is. It'll have a the feel of a of a pump wagon. I might have to decorate it with a bit of um, paraphernalia. You know, some shrunken heads or whatever. A bit of 
bit of snot <laughs> um, to sort of turn that into a pump wagon. But I think that should be that should work quite well. And actually, looking at the art on the back here, I'm looking at these log rams now and thinking to myself, actually, that could make if I find the initiative to do the conversion, quite a cool, um, what are they called, big stabber for the Savage Orcs. Perhaps do a unit filler. If I can find some Orcs which I can convert in a way that they look like they're holding it, or even a big troll or something like that, and, um, and stick it in with the Savage Orcs, that should look pretty cool. Um, yeah, there we go, 1998. Wow, it just brings back just the nostalgia. Going, going crazy at the moment. I love this old box as well. You can see how, I don't know if you can quite see it on the camera there, the discoloration. See, oh, there you go. That, see the discoloration where it's been sitting on the shelf for a long time. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the real thing, guys. All right, let's get some of these open. See, you know, I'm gonna. Can I pick open this sellotape here with my finger? Am I gonna I need to get some scissors? There we go. Here we go. We're in. Oh, already dropping some bits. Let's get this out of the way. All right. Okay, let's just get everything out. Yeah, there's a lot of metal in there. I will not surprise if that blister starts to break after a while. Okay, what do we got? Let's just adjust my camera a little bit. I'm pointing more at the table. There we go. Okay, let's see if I've got everything. So that there. Is it gonna focus on that on that spot thing? He's got like a big crossbow in his hand. That is a cool that is a cool model. Got a big sort of well, I say big crossbow, an ordinary size crossbow. Looks big and it's not in his hands. We've got you know kind of snotling throwing a rock. There we go. Check I've got all the bits first. Four wheels. Spiky roller. Bunch of snot things. Two of the uh, tracks. Oh yeah, this will be the uh, where the pumping gets done. And then that's the platform and the two sides. Yeah, fantastic. Spikes, spiky roller. Let's have a look at some of these. Just love the character on these models. Look at that. Guy blowing a trumpet. Oh, brilliant. Can't wait to get this guy together. Who's this? Oh, here we go. Go with a net. A sort of one who's sort of Dressed up in a bit of a dress there. What's that? A snotling mage. Okay. Oh yeah, and these are the guys doing the pumping. Pump harder, lads. That's literally the name of one of the special rules. Okay. I'll save the other bits back because it's identical anyway. Let's get this one open. Ooh, knocking the camera over. Ah, it just feels good, like, uh, for someone who doesn't buy boxes from Games Workshop anymore, to actually open a box for them that hasn't been opened for 30 years or so, 34 years. No, actually, no, this, sorry, this one isn't from the 90s. But, uh, right, what have we got here? Oh, so this is, yeah, it feels a lot chunkier, this one. Metal a bit bent there. But let's have a look at some of these snotlings. Let's just put a bunch of them in my hand. You can see how they look, just compare the sizing. I think the sculpts are a bit nicer, these, these newer, newer snotlings. Yeah, I mean, they look fabulous. Oh, you've got one standing on his shoulders there. 
Okay, so that guy blowing the trumpet. Let's compare him to the other guy blowing the trumpet from the old one. Okay, so look, I mean, the sizing is about the same, isn't it? Right, let's just put something, me something around. Compare him with that one. One guy blowing a trumpet. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's going to look great. I think you can just mix, mix and match them. Let's have a look at the other guys in here. Okay, yeah, so those two on the right are the ones doing the pumping. Or he's just holding on on the side or something. One with a spear, one with a little bone club. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, it's going to be a bit painstaking painting all these little snot things, but it could be lots of fun. And this one's got the sort of big wheels for the front and then a singular little wheel at the back. Put the silly back in here. That'll be exciting. I'll show you a few other models I've got actually, just ones I randomly managed to pick up. If I can get the uh, camera to focus on them. A few other random ones. Got a bunch of other snotlings somewhere in a cupboard somewhere, but I just couldn't find them to dig them out at some point. This guy is really tiny, this one with the little axe. Little midget snotling. Yeah. All right, let's get this one open. A bit of glorious unboxing. Who doesn't want to see a bit of unboxing? Well, oh, cover art from the fifth edition box set right there. Wow. Let's take this all out. Let's just take this all out. Or polystyrene. Okay, so we've got plastic wheels, six of them, and then we've got, right, okay, so I've got the battering around there, there's the end to it, oh, okay, here we go, there we go, that clip on the side there, maybe. I need to find it off a little bit. I just want to do something over here. Yeah. Oh, there's all different heads to it. Oh, there's the top to it. Yeah, I think size-wise, I mean, that's the size of the other oh, snotling pump wagon. It's going to look a little bit larger than the snotling pump wagon. That's fine, I think. That's a great size. We could put some of the snotlings on the roof and other snotlings on, you know, some of the other platforms there. I think that's going to look great once it's all finished. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do with these ladders. I'm not planning on doing a siege any anytime soon, but I'm sure I'll find a use for them. A train or something. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so I'm gonna have a play with those. Oh, we got the one forty thousand on the back of the uh, on the back of the box there. Not many sieges of castles done in one forty k. Yeah, so I'll get these um, get these all assembled, paint them up, and look out for a future video where I can show off some snotting pump wagons.